on the Jacob Beer Show today. I'm so happy to have on Buddy Brown, who is a country music singer. Perhaps you've heard a couple of his songs um, on Spotify. One of your songs says 17 million, If This Country Had Balls. Um, sadly, it, no opinion on that, but everyone has a different opinion. Some people would probably agree with that. Um, I, I would say mostly I agree with that statement and that song. Um, and you've also had a couple other songs, lots of interesting ones, and you've made it big in the business without kind of having Hollywood behind you. What was that kind of like building up your profile to make it to that point? I guess kind of where did you get started without having to have the support of Hollywood like a lot of singers? Yeah, I tell everybody I'm a 10-year overnight sensation. It just started with grinding and doing the Nashville route, but then just kind of understanding that uh, they were going to buy and own your soul and, con you know, control everything that you did and kind of brainwash you into thinking you had to record these songs that you didn't really believe in or um, songs that you probably didn't even agree with and then just to uh, appease the fan base. So once you kind of get deep enough in Hollywood or Nashville, you definitely start to realize that. Um, that you're only allowed to actually hit this uh, uh, crescendo where your uh, your opinions and your values matter. After you, if you want to get out and, and break into stardom, I mean big stardom, you're gonna have to park all that stuff aside. The family, um, the things you love, and you have to compromise every single bit of it. I was never willing to, so I just went the independent route. It's the long, long road, but it's the right road. And I just encourage anybody who's got a dream to. Uh, to go the same route, just be patient. If it's supposed to work, it will. Interesting. And um, of course, you have an interesting route. Um, you, correct me if I'm wrong, played football in Mississippi State. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, SEC I with, guy. Uh, yeah, SEC guy. I signed with Steve Spurrier um, of the Gators right out of high school, and they ended up going with a defensive back. So I had to uh, tr change schools like right in the middle of just pandemonium and I had no school. So I uh, went to Mississippi state where my dad was a kicker. He actually had the third longest field goal in Mississippi state history back in 79. And I was a punter. Um, those are two very, very different positions. <laughs> One's offense, <laughs> one defense, but I loved it. And it just, it wasn't meant to be the guy I was backing up ended up going to the NFL and he was, uh, he won the Ray guy award for punters, which is wow. I called my dad. I said, I can't beat this guy. So thank God I picked up a guitar and, you know, the rest is history. And real quick, if you don't mind me asking, while you were on the team, did you by chance have a favorite stadium to play in besides Davis Wade Stadium? Um, I'm a lifelong LSU fan. So, you know, Death Valley down there in Baton Rouge, obviously. We, tough we're stadium, down you'd say, to, as an away team to play, a tougher than uh, Tennessee oh. or Alabama. Yeah. I hear Bama's actually not as bad as people say. People say Jordan Hare is actually harder to play at. I think LSU is the most intimidating stadium, especially at nighttime in the USA. I mean, wow. hands down. It uh, the way the the stadium goes up in the uh, in the end zone, and you almost get vertigo just looking up at it. It's it's pretty incredible. About one hundred two thousand crazy loud Cajuns. Uh, there's nothing more electric than running out of that tunnel. Wow. And how did you kind of transition from you know then playing sports, being an athlete like that, to end up um, playing? or not, well, playing and in, getting into the music world, of course. How did that transition kind of work? It was interesting. I didn't marry my wife telling her I wanted to do this at all. I was in real estate at the time, but music, I guess, had always been in me. And I was playing stuff and never could read a single chart of music in my entire life. But I was playing piano and playing guitar. If I heard it one time, I could just lay it down and play it verbatim almost. Um, so I guess it was always in me. And then I started to try to write country albums the kind of country albums that weren't on the radio, but I wanted to hear maybe a little bit, not PC, but, or a little bit more edgy. And as I started to write those things, these songs, you know, they went viral as heck. And so we did a second album and a third, and we're up to our ninth full album, uh, truck sessions album, which is the popular series we do on YouTube. It's going to come out, uh, end of May or June of this year. So some good music coming out, things like that. Awesome. And are you doing any touring with that? No, no. I, I'm um, very allergic to touring, man. I'm not a circus monkey at all. A lot of my good friends, um, very famous people, their lives have been ruined by it. You don't know your family. You don't know your kids. I remember when my boys were two and three years old, I was playing a show in Portland, Oregon, 
and calling them and telling them a bedtime story at 9 p.m. And I hadn't even taken the stage yet. And for a lot of people that don't give a crap about their family, it's, and they got to have that spotlight and that, that ego feed narcissism 24-7, they're fine with that. I was, was never fine with that. I had to be at that baseball game Saturday morning. I had to be in their lives. And um, if you want to pursue fame, you better just, like I said, park your family at the door because you'll never know them. And that just wasn't for me. So I, I take a few dates a year, and I only do as much to where I feel like I'm not away from them, and it's still fun. Interesting. And of course, you're very um, political. I agree with a lot of your opinions. I've had on a lot of people on my show, including Michael Dukakis, who ran for president. Nice guy. Nice guy. I don't agree with him on much. But um, what kind of where do you kind of see our country headed down a direction? Um, there's a lot of things going on, um, mm -hmm. interesting things going on. Where do you kind of see our country headed down? And how do you think we can kind of maybe bring more anti-wokeness into the music world perhaps is a good word to use um, you have singers who um i won't say names i had on one of their drummers the other day so i won't say names but you had a singer who won't perform in uh indiana because we're a pro-life state where do you think we can kind of get this wokeness out and just go back to music it's okay if you're a liberal conservative but let's just listen to music and have a good time on a 80 degree summer night with a thousand best friends listening to some good rock where do you think we can kind of go back to that and get wokeness out of it you're not going to it's uh it's unfortunately this ship has sailed and um the industries find the niche that you're good at and they force you into those kind of uh those topical natures and there's very few people that just want to sing and, and just relax and and not do any of that stuff i'm trying to bring not political anything into my messages but just common sense and the fact of the matter is i don't care I've got family members that are very much so on the left and we spend Thanksgiving with each other every single time, every single year. Um, and we have our disagreements, but I guess you just got to park that stuff at the door. I feel like one side is willing to, the other side wants to create violence. You know, the activist, um, the climate activists just throwing stuff on, uh, <laughs> you know, multi-million dollar paintings and the, uh, the trans activists that are attacking this Riley girl uh, in San Francisco. It just, turns to violence. I don't know any conservative, and I know the deepest, the deepest circle of conservatives in Mississippi. I mean, here in the deep South, not one of them wants to create violence over anything, but the left is, uh, when they don't get their way, they get violent. And I don't think you can ever have peace or any kind of common ground with the extreme left at all. And with the, with the straight up Democrat people, like I've got in my family that are like, all right, buddy, we know you're doing your thing whatever, here's a beer. Those people I can get along with all day long. I th think we need to direct every conversation toward that angle because otherwise we're just fighting and nothing's getting accomplished. Nobody's mind's ever getting changed. You know, I, I agree with that completely. The uh, give a beer and get along like that. Yeah. And you know, here's a little thing is I've talked to a lot of politicians on both sides, U S senators, you name it. And they all actually tell me on my show, at least, that they all get along behind the scenes. So who is it really that's separating the division? Mm. It's the media, if we're going to be completely honest. Oh, yeah. uh, and I'll be 100% honest. As a podcaster, I think podcast shows like mine or Joe Rogan show or others out there are really where it's at. Because, you know, uh, there's some good guys on Fox News and there's some decently nice people on CNN. But, you know, overall, all that still creates way too much division. And, you yeah. know, it's so hard to have a conversation like this in the media world today without so many things getting involved in it. And I just think, you know, there needs to be that thing, like you said, have a beer, have a good time, and let's yeah. celebrate country music or pop music or Christian music or whatever it is. Yeah, so much of what I do is is definitely satirical. I, if I actually was um, letting any of this stuff get to me, I think I'd be a miserable human being. I'm quite the opposite, man. I just, I want to kick back and, and just have a good time. My dogs say, hey, UPS man must be here. Um, and it's funny, when I get cracked up when people take me very, very seriously. I'm like, you don't know me at all. This is uh <laughs> I, I definitely can see both sides of the argument always. And sometimes I find myself a lot more to the middle than the right. And I'm not, I'm not even a registered Republican, you know, if, if truth be known, because I don't feel like they got the balls to get the stuff done that I'd want to get done. I'm a conservative, 
but and I could never be a liberal, but um, I, you know, it's, I guess I'm basically more libertarian than anything else. It really comes down to, do you want peace in your life? Do you want, you know, that kind of certainty where you can go to bed every night and be very, very comfortable in your own skin and comfortable around people who are not like you? That's definitely, you know, what I stand for. And um, I'm a very live and let live guy. So anything I say that sound, sounds very black and white is probably going to be satirical. And it, it's uh, it definitely works. And it, I'm having a lot of fun with it. And the fun part is the part I can never give up because it's uh, it's just a blast to watch people squirm <laughs> who cannot live <laughs> on that box of black and white for sure. No, absolutely. Um, and then a couple other questions I had was what advice would you have for somebody then to kind of get in the music business if they don't want it, like you mentioned, um, be away from family. Like what's, I guess, would you say are three steps you'd kind of have for that? Um, Cause it's, well, it yeah. sounds easy, but it's still tough, you know, to get music out there make some money, put food on the table, yeah. things like that. Uh, so like, would you have been able to do having some good songs out there with quite a bit of views and all that stuff while not, you know, having to be forced to do all this with management? How do you kind of break that thin line and how do you have advice for somebody wanting to go into that? Yeah, I would, unless you just love, absolutely have to be on stage, do it social media wise. I mean, you couldn't have even done it before 2010, really. And now you can, and I take full advantage of it and, the music, I, I, you know, I've got a friend who's a member of the Grand Old Opry and somebody was walking up to him at a baseball game saying, <laughs> you really sound like you sound like a conservative guy. You should uh, listen to Buddy Brown. And he's sitting next to a guy from the Grand Old Opry. It's funny, like it's not the that's not the method anymore of being right. this big time on the radio guy. Nobody's ever going to know you. So if you put the Spotify, effort in YouTube. Yeah, if you put the effort in and just do it online through social media, through all the music outlets, they're going to know you. It, the world is changing. And I feel like I was one of the first to pioneer that. So, yeah, like I said, don't go into the music scene, on stage scene, unless you just have to be, unless that's what makes you feel whole. Like you've got to be doing that. And I would highly advise you to be single if you're going to go that route. For sure. And, and, podcast even not that my show's as big as joe rogan show or anywhere close to that but you know you look at joe rogan as an example um mm -hmm. he pretty much has like probably 98 percent of freedom over his show if it was mainstream some of the guests on his show would not be appearing on there you wouldn't be able to have a conversation with bernie sanders or also have a conversation with alex jones that wouldn't be possible if you were on fox yeah. or cnn you wouldn't be able to talk to bob lazar the guy who worked at area 51 or so he says mm -hmm. whereas with that independent media like you said you have so much more freedom over it to do whatever you want you know you're not owned and look he's still able to make a good career out of it and put plenty of bread on the table at night so mm -hmm. uh, very I, I hear that a lot from people in industries not just singing but podcasting as well with that so appreciate that advice there um and hopefully people who listen will think that might be a new approach to the music world or any world with social media so appreciate that the other the last thing i'd say about that is um just to stick to your guns because everybody's gonna whether it's podcasting or acting or music or whatever your your job specialty is somebody's gonna come around and try to change you to you know fit inside their little box so don't be afraid to take that little box and shove it up their butt because it, at the end of the day if you stick to your guns and it doesn't work, at least you stuck to your guns. No, I did. And I changed for nobody and it worked. So that feeling is unbelievable because now we're talking hundred percent freedom with what I do. And I don't know of any other way you could possibly want to live. So even if it goes slower, if you're truly just valuing and getting just the absolute, you know, most excitement out of what you're doing every single day, because this is what you believe in then this is what you should be doing. You don't need to look for something that's going to get bigger ratings or, or the trend. Don't ever follow trends. By the time you try to jump on the trend band, bandwagon, that trend is already over. So just do what God has given you to, you know, put inside of you what you can pump out and let that be what it's going to be. They're either going to like it or they're not, but at least you're going to be real because people can smell BS a mile away and it don't smell good. Just be yourself. It will always grow and uh and it'll always be authentic people will respond to that interesting 
Well, I appreciate you so much for coming on the Jacob Beer Show today. Is there anything else that you'd like to say um, where people can find your information at? Yeah, uh, website's bloodbrowncountry.com, and all the music is on um, Spotify and Apple Music. Two Billboard Country albums, 400 million views. So subscribe on YouTube. For sure. Um, just jump on there. We'd be glad to have you. Appreciate it. One last thing I just want to kind of sneak in real quick is if you have a favorite song that you've done so far, what would it be? Pedro. Interesting. Without a doubt. Yeah, it's a, it's a story about getting kidnapped by the cartel on a hunting trip in Mexico. And uh, it's kind of reads like a movie. It's always been a um, uh, goal of mine to really, really make a phenomenal music video of it one day. It will happen, just still putting pieces together. Interesting. Well, excited when that will be out. That will be a very cool thing to be able to see. I appreciate you so much coming on the Jacob Buer Show today. Jacob, keep fighting, man. You're young, and I think you got a lot of potential ahead of you, buddy. Thank you.